Uh, so National Cabinet, obviously, yesterday was briefed uh, uh, on uh, uh, safety and epidemiology uh, issues, both by the Chief Medical Officer, uh, Professor Paul Kelly, and by Victoria's uh, Deputy Chief Health Officer, Professor Alan Cheng, who is co-chair of ATAGI, or the Australian Technical Advisory Group on Immunisation. In addition, uh, Commodore Young, um, as well as uh, the uh, team of uh, Professor Brendan Murphy and uh, Caroline Edwards, uh, the Secretary and Deputy Secretary of uh, the uh, Commonwealth Department of Health. Uh, significantly, uh, there was very strong consensus uh, around three areas of joint partnership. Uh, firstly, uh, an agreed affirmation that the priority for Australia remains the current phases of Phase 1A and Phase 1B, focusing on the vulnerable Australians, completing that task. We've had a challenge that was thrown at us with the uh, changes to the preferred arrangements for under 50s that uh, the medical experts recommended, but they've done that on the basis of safety. So every day, every day, uh, there are new things we have to adapt to, uh, but significantly, that priority on making sure everybody in Phase 1A and 1B is vaccinated as early as possible, over 50s, under 50s, over 50s, where Pfizer, uh, uh, where uh, AstraZeneca remains the preferred vaccine, and under 50s, where Pfizer remains the preferred vaccine, to ensure that all of those occur. The um, over 50s arrangements in 1A and 1B remain largely unchanged. The general population for over 70s and over 80s, that's occurring. That's providing the bulk of the national vaccinations at the moment. Uh, but also uh, for the others in that category uh, to be able to go ahead and receive the AstraZeneca as they currently can and as is currently recommended. Uh, then in relation to possible changes, uh, what we have uh, was an agreement in principle to be reaffirmed uh, either this Thursday or subsequently through the National Cabinet process uh, of potentially bringing forward the general population access to AstraZeneca for over 50s. This is actually potentially bringing forward a part of the rollout and I think is a, uh, a very important step. Uh, secondly, um, the potentially increased role uh, for state and territory uh, large vaccination clinics uh, building on what they have already got in place for those over 50s in the general population for AstraZeneca. But each state and territory will determine uh, what they do, if they do it and how they do it. Uh, many have in place those clinics. This would be opening up exi uh, existing clinics for further groups within the population, the general over 50s, or they may choose to be setting up other clinics around their states or territories. Um, those are the two principal changes which were being looked at in the, uh, in the immediate short term. And then the third point that came out of uh, the National Cabinet was a strong, clear reaffirmation that general practices remain the principal means uh, for vaccinating the over 50s. They've done an extraordinary job. Um, they, uh, what we've seen is, uh, as uh, Karen Price said, uh, the head of the RACGP, uh, GPs are a mass vaccination program. They're just in a lot of places at a lot of times and uh, they're helping to vaccinate Australians. So we'll uh, work our way through the program. Uh, we are seeing uh, you know, zero cases on most days in Australia against a world which is in the grip of an ongoing pandemic, an incredible juxtaposition, and at the same time reaching by the end of today, 1.7 million Australians with uh, vaccination.